Admittedly, we might hang around on Twitter a bit too much, but it's such a good source of inspiration if you have the right people in your feed. People such as Daniel Piker at Kangaroo Physics, who posted this animation a few days ago. And of course we were curious what's going on, and luckily Piker is quite open in sharing how he creates those types of setups. So what's going on here? Well, the blue surface you're seeing here is the ISO surface of those two triangles winding numbers. What does that mean? So let's go about this step by step. The ISO surface, you know this from VDBs. That means you can store a mesh surface in a volume and then by cleverly choosing which value in said volume you want to regard as the surface of a mesh, you can generate said mesh. That is the blue one here. And if you want to learn more about that technique and the underlying theory, I can highly recommend our premium course on volumes. The other part in here is the winding number. So what is a winding number? This example on Wikipedia is pretty brilliant. A winding number for this red curve here at this point where the person is standing is just the number of turns this person has to perform to follow the whole length of that curve here. In this case resulting in a winding number of two as the person has to make two turns. And now what we need to do to set this up here is generate some curves, in this case those two triangles, and then for a given area and space for a given volume for each point in this area or for each voxel in this area, calculate the winding numbers of those two triangles here by just summing up those individual winding numbers and thus generate a volume that encodes a bunch of values. And then we just have to make sure to convert this volume into a surface. In this rather brief tutorial, I want to go over a non vex way of doing that. And I want to address some issues or observations that I made by going this route. So in Houdini, as always, the first thing I want to drop down is a geo node and then dive in there. And in here, I'll just create two grids. In this case, I'll just be working on rectangles. So I'm going to set this to be two rows by two columns and to switch my display to be smooth wire shaded. So it displays the outlines of my grid. So in this case, just this one quad here. Let's scale this a bit to, I don't know, 1.6 by 1 and just use those tool handles here to offset, rotate and move it around in space a bit. And let's just copy and paste that grid and move that to another position. Again, rotating it around a bit. So we just have another grid sitting here and let's merge those two grids using a merge node just like so. So now we have those two grids here. Next, I need to create a volume for which I'll evaluate the winding number at each discrete position in the volume. And in this case, I'm not going to use a traditional Houdini volume or VDB, but instead I'm going to use a grid of points in space. And I'll go about why I do that in a second. Let's just create that grid first by first dropping down a bound node, which will give me the bounding box for the incoming geometry. In this case, my two grids up here. I want to make sure that this bounding box is a bit bigger than the enclosed geometry here. And I can do so by increasing the lower and upper padding. And instead of typing in those six numbers individually, what I want to do is just increase my padding in this first slot by 0.2, then right click in here, copy that parameter and paste that as a relative reference in the remaining five slots, just like this. Final one is this one here. So now I can dial in the upper and lower padding with just a single value like so. Let's leave it at 0.3. And now let's convert this box here into a quote unquote volume made out of points. So basically a three dimensional raster of points. To do that, I can abuse the points from volume SOP here, which creates exactly that, a rasterized grid of points in space. In this case, the initial point configuration is set to be a grid with those points sitting in this cubic grid here. However, I want to set this to tetrahedral for now, like so, so I get a better packing of points. And also I want to decrease the point separation to 0.05, making this grid a good bit denser. And now to prevent artifacts, I want to jitter each individual points position a bit, make this whole grid a bit more irregular by increasing the jitter scale to one. So now we have this fully filled box with points. Why do we need those points and not going to work on volumes? Because the SOP we're going to use to calculate the winding number and sum those up of those two grids is only able to work on points. And usually the winding number SOP is used to determine if a point lies within a given geometry or outside of it. So let's drop that down. It's called winding number, has two inputs. The first one just takes in the points at whose position we want to evaluate the winding number and let's move those over here. The second input slot takes in the geometry for which we want to evaluate the winding number. That means checking for each of those points if this point lies inside or outside of that geometry. So if we highlight this, it executed well, no errors so far, and we created a new attribute called winding number into which we start the winding number onto each of those points. So let's visualize that using a visualize node here. Let's wire that up after the winding number here. And under the visualizers tab, let's set the attribute not to P, but to select point and then select the winding number here. And you can see we're getting this. So how do we turn that into a surface? Well, the easiest way I found was to turn 
this bunch of points into a VDB first and then convert this VDB into an SDF, which is a volume representing a surface. So to turn a bunch of volumes into a VDB, I'm gonna use the volume rasterize attributes node here, which I'll wire in below the winding number here. Let's move that to the side. I wanna highlight this here and set this up. So the attributes I wanna rasterize is just the winding number here. My voxel size should be the same as the point separation here. So let's just link those two by maybe just going in here, setting this voxel size to 0.05, then right clicking in here, copying that parameter, going up to my points from volume, selecting this here and right clicking again and pasting as a relative reference. So now with my volume rasterize attributes, voxel size, I can also drive the points from volumes point distance. The particle scale in my case should be the same as the voxel size, so again, I'm gonna mark this here, right click and paste the relative reference here. And I had good success with increasing the minimum filter size a bit. And that is it. So we just rasterized these point attributes here into this fog volume, this fog VDB. Now what we can do is straight up convert this to an SDF. That means a surface representation or even to a polygonal surface by using a convert VDB node, which will wire in after the volume rasterize attributes. And this one, we're gonna set up to convert this to polygons. And now you can see that's a bit weird. So what we could do is try dialing in that ISO value here. And we can see the higher we dial this in, the better our surface becomes. Resolution is quite coarse, so we could feel tempted to just increase our resolution by decreasing our individual voxel size here. And you can see that works. And also we are getting these jacked artifacts. So we might feel tempted to, between the volume rasterize attributes and the convert VDB, add a VDB smooth, to just blur out this volume a bit like so. Now let's go back up here and maybe copy and paste the grid a third time, wire this into the merge as well. And then let's move that third grid around to maybe just, I don't know, down here somewhere. And we can see we are generating these surfaces, these blobby surfaces. Now to open up those surfaces, what we could do is just take this merge geometry here, extrude it, and then use it to select those facing points here in the final mesh and just delete them so we could get an open mesh such as Daniel Piker did in his preview animations. And that is it, a very easy and very straightforward setup to model organic surfaces in Houdini using the winding number of a mesh. The advantage of the setup is that admittedly it is quite fast and I was surprised how fast it is. That is because the winding number SOP here is I assume implemented in C++ directly. That means the algorithm works very efficiently, although we have to first run this on those points here, which we then convert into a volume and blur out and convert back to a mesh, but it's working fine. And also you don't have to use any special nodes. So this is all standard SOPs, no scripting involved. However, there is one thing that bugs me about this, which is this part that we are first calculating the winding number on points, which we then convert into a volume and that volume we convert back to a surface. And I think the whole setup, at least to me, would make more sense if instead of running this over points, which we then convert into a volume, if we run the setup over a volume to begin with. However, for that, we're gonna dive deep into scripting and the math involved behind the winding number. So I decided to make this a premium tutorial in our course on advanced setups, which we're gonna publish this Thursday. So if you wanna support us or gain access to said premium courses, you might wanna consider becoming a patron of ours. And if you happen to be a patron already, Thanks so much. It's through your help that Intagma in this form is possible. With a very special thank you going out to Rodeo Effects, Important Looking Pirates, Sean Edwards, Chris Abair, and Rafik Anado. Thanks so much, folks. As always, we're intrigued to see what you guys cook up using this or other techniques, so don't be shy sharing your artwork. And until next time, it is cheers and goodbye.